All right, Mr. Palmer here, got a video on CPU performance. Um, I hope uh, YouTube doesn't mess up the sound again when I upload this, but let's see what happens. Okay, so this video about CPU performance is gonna be a bit of a GCSE recap with a couple of new details in there for you. And basically what we're looking at are three different ways CPU performance can be enhanced, okay? And you need to also be able to explain why each of these might not have the impact that is required. So basically, first of all, we're gonna kick off with what is the purpose of a CPU? The key definition, the purpose of a CPU is to fetch, decode, and execute instru instructions, nothing else, okay? Obviously, you want to improve CPU performance because the more of those cycles you are completing per second, the, the less time it's going to take for the end user to get the result of the process that they're running. Now, the first way to improve the performance of the CPU is to uh, increase the clock speed. Remember, we measure clock speed in hertz. Each time the clock signals um, the start of a new cycle, you get a new fetch, decode, execute operation. Therefore, the more clock cycles you have per second, uh, the more cycles that are being, more fetch, decode, execute operations are being uh, processed each second. Uh, is clock speed an accurate measurement of performance? And the answer is no, it's not, because we know that things like floating point operations are exceedingly complex and may take um, uh, more time to complete. Uh, therefore, uh, we there are alternative measures for the speed of a CPU, not just um, uh, the clock speed. All right. The next thing to be thinking about basically is what is a core. All right. So the core basically a core is a processing unit within the CPU itself that executes the instructions in order to produce the result that is the desired result. Okay. So the CPU has many other components, but within it, the core is the bit that has a control unit, etc., 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 AOU, blah, 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 right? So the second way of improving the performance of the CPU is by increasing the number of cores. So therefore, if you look at this um, schematic of a CPU, you can see that this is a quad core processor because it has four cores within it, okay? Now, uh, remember when we write a program, every program is nothing but a list of instructions. So if you have one brain, okay, you are basically able to process one set of instructions. So you can imagine if you have a single core CPU, okay, therefore you can do one job at once because you're processing one set of instructions. Obviously, if you have two brains, you can take on board two sets of instructions and therefore give two results at the same time in parallel. Therefore, a dual core processor will be able to do two jobs at once. That is that always necessarily the case though? Because if you think about this, if you've got a dual core processor, you're doing two jobs at once, and so therefore you should be able to get twice as much work done within the same amount of time. However, what happens if you're, you've got a dual core, you've got two brains, but you're only given one set of instructions, okay? You're only, still only gonna get one result. It's gonna take the same amount of time, okay? So multiple cores are not always necessarily better, okay? Basically, if you've got multiple cores, but only one of those cores is active, okay? the other cores are idle, all right? So therefore, uh, a multi-core processor is only ever going to be useful if you have a multi-threaded application that can make use of all the different cores. Yeah. Or you have an operating system that knows how to schedule the task and spread them across the different cores, right? The third way of improving the performance of your CPU is to make use of cache memory. So cache, uh, base, uh, if we think about um, um, uh, the execution of instructions, okay? The time taken for instructions to reach the CPU from the RAM is still too large. The RAM is fast, but not fast enough. So, uh, in terms of CPU scheduling, we know what task we are going to be performing next, all right? The scheduler is quite, um, uh, we can kind of predict basically what set of instructions we're gonna need next. So why don't, we, what would happen if we could actually prepare those instructions and that data, get it ready for the CPU in a really, um, uh, accessible location and that's basically what cache memory is small super fast memory located on the CPU and it contains the next instructions and data that are needed by the CPU that's a that's like a definition for you bang that's what it is okay so basically you got your RAM okay you got your CPU and in between it you got your cache all right so the cache contains the next data instructions that are needed whereas the RAM contains all the programs and data that's currently in use the CPU will check with the cache to see if the data that it needs and the instructions it needs are in the cache. If they're not there, then it will have to fetch directly from the RAM. So straight away, you can see where some, where things, some things might go wrong with this, okay? Because basically, if the stuff that the CPU needs is not in the cache, it's going to have to go to the RAM, and so therefore, the whole process will there slow down. Um, 
you can actually separate cash out into levels. So from the RAM, uh, the stuff you need might go, the schedule will move it into level three cash, get moved into level two cash, which is a little bit closer to the CPU, and the level one cash, which is even closer to the CPU, all right? Um, now, uh, if you have different levels of cash, another way of thinking about it is that you've got multiple cores on your CPU, and each core has its own level one cache, then each core might have its slightly larger level two cache, which contains more data and instructions that will be needed after what is currently in the level one. And then there might be a really large level three cache outside of those uh, two cores, and that, that level three cache is shared by all the cores, all right? There may not be level three cache, maybe each core only has level one cache and there's shared level two cache, all right? But the whole point is that there's a hierarchy of caches in between the RAM and the CPU control unit um, and AOU, all right? So as we've said already, cache doesn't always necessarily um, uh, increase the speed of execution because if the wrong stuff is in the cache, the cache needs to be flushed, okay? And the CPU is gonna have to fetch from the RAM and it will bang, 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 bang to get into the CPU, and therefore the core is going to be idle while that fetch is being performed, okay? So you should now be able to describe three different ways CPU performance can be enhanced, and you should also be able to explain why each of these might not have the impact required.